Welcome to the demo video of our bookkeeping spreadsheet. Our bookkeeping spreadsheet contains a total of seven tabs plus a start tab. The first tab that you will find in your spreadsheet is the start tab. In the start tab, you're going to change your currency, the start date, enter your subcategories for your income and expenses, and add your profit goals for each individual month. The next step that you will find is your log tab. Your log tab is where you'll be able to add all your individual transactions. The second tab, or the third tab actually, that you will find is your month tab. Your month tab will show a total of your transactions that you've entered in your log tab. All you have to do for this tab is switch your month and your year and everything else will update automatically for you. The custom tab works exactly the same way as the month tab. The only difference is that instead of selecting a month, you can select a start and an end date here. So if for example you have an irregular month or you would like to see for example a quarterly overview, you can use this tab. The next tab is the year tab. In the year tab all you have to do is change the start date and everything else will update automatically for you. Then we also have a five year tab. So this will allow you to compare five years of progress at the same time. The next step that you'll find is a balance dashboard. The balance dashboard will allow you to keep track of up to 25 different account balances. You can enter the account names here. You can enter a type of account here and a start balance in here. Everything else will update automatically for you. The last step that we have included in the spreadsheet is a sales tax tracker or a VAT tracker. Everything on this tab updates automatically as well. The only thing you need to do is change the start month on the top left. Now to have a better look at how the spreadsheet works, let's head over back to the start tab. On the start tab, the first thing you're going to want to do is change your currency, as when you change your currency here, it will update everywhere else in the spreadsheet. To change your currency, all you have to do is double click on this field, hit the backspace button on the keyboard and then type in a currency sign or abbreviation of your own, for example the euro sign. As you can see, it automatically already updated on the profit goal section here. The next thing you can do is change your start date. So this spreadsheet allows you to keep track of up to five years. So basically, what you need to do to change your start date is just simply double click on this field. A little calendar will pop up if you're on your computer or laptop, and then you'll be able to select a start date. If you're on an iPad or a mobile device, you'll have to type in the date manually. Once you update your start date here, it will automatically update in the profit goal section down below. Every other tab, however, you just update the start date on the tab itself. Now once you've set your start date and your currency, you can add your subcategories. In total, you can add 65 income and 65 expense subcategories. We've already added some examples, so we can have a better look at the spreadsheet and not make this video too long, but you can add any income or any expense subcategory that works for you. To enter a subcategory, all you have to do is double click on this field and just type in a subcategory of your own. For example, in this case, let's just say test example, we can see that when we add it here, it will update automatically everywhere on every other tab. So if at any point in time you want to add more income and expense subcategories, make sure not to do it on the individual tabs, but to do it here. So this way you will know it will update on all the other tabs. Now the last thing that you can do on the start tab is actually add a profit goal. This section is completely optional, but if you have any profit goals and you would like to keep track of your profit progress, you can enter that here. So you can enter an individual goal for each month, and then the year total will automatically be calculated for you. So if, for example, in the year 2021, or let's say it is actually currently 2023, so let's go and skip ahead a little bit to the current year. Let's say we started in January 1st, 2023, and let's say this month we have a profit goal of $5,000 each month. You can adjust these profit goals at any point in time whenever you need. And of course, you don't have to plan five years in advance already. You can just do this whenever you would like to do this. Now, the next step that we're going to have a better look at is our log tab. So your log tab is where you will keep track of all your transactions. We've added a bunch of columns here, but not every column is mandatory for the spreadsheet to work properly. So to make sure that the transactions show up in the right overview, just make sure you enter the date, you enter the amount, you enter the category and the subcategory. So basically these four fields are mandatory. Without these four fields, the spreadsheet will not know where to place your transaction and basically it will not show up anywhere. But columns like an ID, account, which links to our account balance dashboard where you can see a drop down of all your accounts, these are both optional. Then another optional column that we have included is VAT and sales tax. If you would like to keep track of sales tax collected and paid any other fees, because we know there are certain people that, for example, have federal tax and state sales tax. So if you would like to keep track of both of these, you can use this section or, for example, shipping fees or um, payment processing fees. 
any other fees that you would like to keep track of, these are completely optional. Now the net amount is a column that automatically updates for you. So no matter if you use the VAT or sales tax or the other fees, make sure not to delete the net amount column as basically the spreadsheet will take all its calculations from here. So now let's say we add a transaction. So let's say it's currently the 2nd of January and we have an invoice number here. Let's just say it is 001 and we received this amount into our checking account and this was an amount of $500. Let's say the sales tax for this was $50 we can now see that the net amount for this was $450. So that net amount is automatically calculated for you. So now we just add income and now we just add a subcategory. So let's say for example, advertising, we have now successfully added our transaction. So now that we have added this transaction, if for example, we head over to our month tab, we can now see that when we select January, 2023, that our transaction has been added here. So we can see the total of income, we can see the taxes and the fees combined, and we can see the net income. In addition, we'll also be able to see our profit progress. So we set a profit goal of 5,000, and currently we have a profit of $450. So we're at a profit progress of 9%. The more transactions you'll add, you'll also be able to see an income breakdown and an expense breakdown as well. In addition, you'll also be able to see a profit margin on the bottom here, as well as a cash flow, and all of these graphs update automatically as soon as you start adding more transactions. What might be good to know is that your income and expenses will actually automatically rank in order from highest to lowest for you. So if, for example, we now add another transaction, so let's say it is the 2nd of January and we have received more money into our checking account, let's say 2500 and the steel stacks for this was $250. Also, this is income, and this was from product sales that we received. Now, when we go back to the month section, we can see that advertising has dropped a spot and most of our income actually came from product sales. We can now also see that our profit progress and our income breakdown and basically anything else in this overview has updated for us. So now let's say we add an expense. So on the 2nd of January, from our checking account, we also paid $500 and the sales tax for this was $75. So let's say we spent money on office supplies. Now when we go back to the month section we can see that our again all the graphs have updated and our expense section and our income section have updated as well. Now when we head over to our custom tab we can actually see that it shows the exact same information in the income breakdown, expense breakdown and these sections down below. The only difference is, is that we sent a three month period so for example if we want a quarterly overview so now our profit goal is taken for those three months. So for those three months, our profit progress is 15.17% instead of the 45.5% that we had in the previous month. So basically, again, all you have to do on this custom tab is just switch your start and your end date. So if, for example, we would want the next quarterly overview and you start on the 1st of April, and you want an overview till the end of June, you can see that everything is zero because we basically have not added any transactions for that period. Now the next overview that we have is the year overview and for the year overview basically all you have to do is just switch your start day. So we have set it up with a start day instead of a start month because we do know there are people from countries which start day starts on the 5th of April for example and not exactly on the 1st of the month. So if you switch it to let's say for example let's take that 5th of April just please know that every single month will now start on the 5th. So basically this month will show from the 5th of April till the 4th of May. The next month will show from the 5th of May till the 4th of June and so on. You start on the 5th of April and then every overview will show exactly a month after your start date. But now let's say for example we go back to our original. So let's say the 1st of January. So now that we've updated that start date we can see all of our goals that we have entered in that start tab including the actual profit that we made. So you can easily see how you're comparing on your goals versus your actual profit. You can see a month-to-month -month breakdown of your income expenses profit and your total year-to-date profit. So basically the year-to-date profit is the total of that profit. So let's say in February if you had 5,000 profit it will show 5,000 plus whatever you've made in January. You have a couple of graphs here as well so including an income and expense breakdown like you had on the month and the custom tab. You have the profit progress as well. You have a year to date profit. So basically this will show you the total throughout the year of your profit. And you also have a month by month profit section. Now, when you scroll down, you will also be able to see an income month by month and an expense month by month section. So you can see how you compare it for every single month. You can also see the total and the average. 
and also these will automatically rank from highest to lowest for you so you can easily see where you receive the most money in income and where you've spent the most money like for that year that you've selected. Now the next overview that we have had it is our five year overview and this works exactly the same way so basically you just select a start date. Now you can select any start date by simply double clicking on this field again but please know that basically the spreadsheet is set up for just a five year period so let's say if you set a start date for the 1st of January 2023 in the start tab and let's switch it to that we basically it will only take five years of profit goals that you have entered in your start tab. So let's say if you would have started in 2021 on here and you can enter all that information in the log tab, just know that your profit goals will not show for this section because the start tab will only allow you to set five years of profit goals. Now basically this tab is the exact same way as the year tab. So here you can see the profit goals versus actual for the years and basically the information you've entered in your start tab versus your actual profit. And then for each and every single year, you can see your income expenses, your profit, and your growth compared to the last year. Now, as there's no year before 2023 or before your start date, it will not show any growth for that first year. Now, it might be good to know that, again, this works the exact same way as the year tab. So if, for example, you would start on the 5th of April, just know that the year will show from the 5th of April till the 4th of April next year. So it won't show the calendar year, but basically the year that you have selected from your start date. When you scroll down, you will also be able to see your cash flow for each every single year. So your income expenses and your profit. And you will also be able to see a breakdown of all your expenses and your income for year by year. And these are the exact same way. So it shows that year from the start date that you have selected. You'll also be able to see a total. And basically, just like all the other tabs, they'll automatically rank from highest total to lowest total, basically. And the same for the expenses. Now, the next step that we've included that we briefly looked at earlier was our balance overview. So if you would like to keep track of balances, you can add your accounts here. And when you add your accounts here, it will automatically update on the drop down section here. So let's say, for example, you would like to add an example test account. So let's say example number one. Now, when we go to the log tab, we can see that this account has been added to our log tab. Now for every account, you can enter a type of account if you like, and you can enter a start balance if you have a start balance in any of the accounts. The total in is just all of the income. The total out is just all of the expenses. The adjustments come from the section down below here if you would like to make any adjustments to your accounts. And the current balance is just the total of these three. Now you also have a balance by date section, which was mainly included for those that, for example, have credit cards. So let's say, for example, you would like to see how much you've spent on that credit card for that month. So what you simply can do is just select the account or the credit card and then enter start and an end date. And we'll show you exactly what your start balance was, what has what you have added or like spent during that section and then what the end balance is. Now, if you would like to make any adjustments to your accounts, all you have to do is scroll down here and use this adjustment section. So this adjustment section was mainly included for both the option to transfer between account balances, but also to add positive or negative transactions that aren't necessarily income or expenses that you've added in your lock tab, but you do still want to keep track of to correct that account balance. So for example, interest charges or interest received on savings accounts. So let's say, for example, you want to transfer money from your checking to your savings account. So basically what you do is just select the date. So let's say it is currently the 3rd of April and money is left. So negative, it leaves your checking account and you put $500 into that savings account. So basically it left minus checking and plus into savings. And when you go on the top here, you can see it now has left your check-in and has been added to your savings accounts. Now, if you would like to just make an adjustment, so let's say, for example, you received interest on your savings account, what you do is just add the date. So let's say, for example, it was the 1st of January. Now, since nothing left your account, you can leave the negative and you can leave the negative section empty. You just add that $10, let's say, in interest that you received, and then you simply add the account the money came into. So let's say the savings accounts. And now you can see that the $10 has been added. It works exactly the opposite way, for example, if interest was charged on a credit card. So now basically money left the account. So let's say on a credit card and nothing left or nothing came into an account. So now you can see on credit card one, you were charged $10. Now, it might be good to know that when you enter a start balance, that if you have any money that you owe on a credit card, we recommend adding it as a negative amount. So that way you have a better idea of how much you actually owe on that card and how much your current balance is in total. 
Now the last step we have included is our VAT and fee section. So as mentioned, we have an option to track for VAT or sales tax as well as other fees. If you don't keep track of this, you can hide this tab and you can simply not use it. Basically, it is completely optional, but we do want to like include this option if you do would like to keep track of it. So basically, again, all you have to do here is just select a start date. So let's say, for example, you want to start in 2023 because that's the year that we're currently in. You just switch it to January 2023 and you can automatically see that you've collected $300 in sales tax and you paid $75 in sales tax. So basically, this will update automatically for you. All you have to do is just select that start month. Also, this works exactly the same way. So if you select the first of the month, it will show exactly from the first till the last of the month. Should you start on another day? So let's say, for example, the seventh of the month, it will show from the seventh of the month you select to the sixth of the next month and basically that is how everything works so we did want to make this spreadsheet as customizable as possible now we'll show you a couple of examples of how you could customize this to make it a little bit more of an overview that would work for you so let's say for example you're in the log tab and you would not like to keep track of any VAT or sales tax or any other V's now what you can do to make that overview a little bit more compact is just hide these columns we don't recommend deleting the columns because basically in the future, if you ever want to change it, you could just unhide it and that way you would still have all the functions included. But this way, if you hide them, they're not visible, but anytime you need them, you could make them visible. Now to hide a column, all you do is click on the most left column and then click on the most right column that you want to hide. So now you can see there's four columns selected. Now simply right click on the four columns selected and click hide columns. As you can see now, you have a very nice and compact view. You cannot see these sections anymore, but at any point that you need them, you just click on these little arrows here and basically all of them will show. Now, this trick can also be used if you would like to hide rows. So if, for example, you've completed a month of transactions and you would like this overview to be a little bit more compact and not too long. So now what you can do is again, just click on the most top row, hold shift on your keyboard, click on the most bottom row that you wanna hide, right click and click hide rows. So again, this works the exact same way. All of your information is still there, so it's still accessible in all of the overviews, but this way your log tab won't be too long. At any point you need them, again, you just click on those little arrows and it will become available again. Now you could also use this in any of the other tabs. So let's say, for example, in the month tab, you have only added 10 subcategories for both of them, and you would like to have it a little bit more of a compact view. What you can do is just simply hide the rows that you don't need. Now, if you would still like to access these graphs that we have on the side here, we don't recommend hiding these rows. But what you could do, for example, is just click on the top row of number 55, hold shift on your keyboard, click on the bottom row of 85, and then just click again, hide rows. And now you can see you have a very nice little compact overview instead of that very long overview. Again, at any point that you need it, you just click on those little arrows again, and all of these sections will be made available again. Now in the year overview and the five year overview, it's a little bit easier because basically you can see exactly all of the rows that you won't use. So again, what you can do is just click on the top row, hold shift, click on the bottom row, and then just click hide rows again. And now you can see that for the year overview, you just now have only the subcategories that you actually use. So instead of having that super long overview, you just have a nice and compact overview for the year overview instead. Any point you need them, you can just unhide them. So for example, if you added more income subcategories, you can just unhide them again. So basically this trick you can use for any of the tabs and for anywhere that you don't need these rows. You could even do it in the balance dashboard, but all of these will allow you to hide the things that you don't need. Now, if you don't wanna keep track of your, let's say your account balances or the VAT or sales tax fees, what you can do is also just hide these tabs. So what you can do is just click on a little arrow, click on hide sheet. It is now hidden in any point that you need it. And let's say you change your mind and you would like to use it. What you could do is just click on those three little lines here and then click on that light gray or that grayed out sheet. And now it will just be made available again. Now the last option that we have included to customize the colors of your spreadsheet a little bit more is we basically set up everything with a theme. So we can see it a little bit easier when we head over to the month tab. And now basically to change the colors of your theme, all you have to do is click on that bucket and then click on that little arrow here. Now all of these colors will pop up. And now let's say for example, you don't like light blue and you would prefer green. If you now select green, you can see that that color everywhere that it was blue, it will update to green automatically. So basically this way you can 
change it to any color that you like. So it doesn't have to be pastel color themed. You can make it black and white. You can make it green, blue, or anything that works for you. And that is basically everything that you need to know about the spreadsheet. If you have any other questions, I'll be sure to leave some contact information in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.